Okay, we're recording in a different place. I've recorded here before, but I usually record up in my little room, the little place that I designated my recording spot. But if you are a YouTuber, or maybe even if you just work from home, once you get your whole little setup and you, and you get into your flow of doing things in the same spot, you start to feel trapped. You're like, who built this prison for me? Oh wait, I did. And you wanna get out. So this is me getting out, but feeling really weird about it because the lighting isn't the way I set it up because obviously this is not where I'm supposed to be recording. I don't have lights, all of that stuff, but whatever, we're doing it because I felt trapped. So we're here, we're doing an empties video. We're talking about trash. We're talking about things that I used up, what I'm gonna be repurchasing, what is just gonna be trash, what you should avoid, and what you should probably try if you haven't tried before. A lot of these things I've talked about before because when I find something good, obviously, I wanna keep using it. And hey, if you've never seen one of these videos before, it's kind of like a long-term favorites video, which is why I love empties videos. I love watching people's empties videos. People don't do them as much as they used to, but I still feel like they have a lot of value and it really says something when somebody's actually used something all the way up and they say they're gonna repurchase it. That means it's worth it. So <laughs> I like doing them and I have a ton of empties to share with you guys. We have graduated from the little basket that I've used for, I don't know, 10 years at this point. This is a giant beach bag <laughs> and it's really large. So it's really not showing how much stuff is really in here, but it's about half full. We've got a lot to talk about. It's coming in no order whatsoever, so prepare yourself for that. So let's just get started. Can you see how long and lengthy this plant has gotten? Look at this. I could use this as like a boa. I don't want to hurt it. It's really not getting to shine in this video. It needs to be more involved. Anyway, let's get started. I've gotten very off topic and we haven't even started the video. Let's start with something new that I don't think I've ever talked about on my channel. This is the Good Molecules Instant Cleansing Balm. Ever since I had to go back to natural lashes and using waterproof mascara as my first step to keep my lashes curled because I have really straight lashes, I have been obviously hating removing my makeup because waterproof mascara is such a pain to remove. I absolutely hate it. So I went back to a cleansing balm and I got this one, never tried it before, and I absolutely love it. I can't remember the exact price for this one, but I'll put it on screen somewhere. I'm remembering that it wasn't very expensive, which obviously is wonderful because a makeup remover is something you're gonna be repurchasing a million times. And ever since I finished this one, I've been using a different cleansing balm that I already had because obviously I wanna use up what I have and I haven't liked it as much. I really missed this one and I wanna go back to it. I kind of don't love how small it is, but you only need a little bit to break down the makeup Makeup. It does a really good job with eye makeup and if you're wearing like full coverage foundation, you know, sunscreen, all the things that we put on our faces, I do think this is really great. I don't use it as a standalone product. I do go in and cleanse afterward, but I really love this for a makeup remover. Absolutely would repurchase. Definitely am repurchasing because I miss it. I miss it a lot. <laughs> okay, next up, my body wash slash soap of all trades. This kind of soap can do many, many things for you. You can wash your body with it. It says that you can wash your hair with it. Do not do that. Never do that. <laughs> In high school or a little bit after high school, I had a friend tell me, it was a guy, tell me that you could wash your hair with this, Dr. Bronner's specifically, because he washes hair with it. And I don't know why I took his advice about shampoo. I tried it on my hair and my hair felt like it was gonna fall out. It felt like straw. It was absolutely horrendous. I could barely brush it out. I'm never doing that again, but it does really work well for washing a multitude of other things. I've heard people say they wash their car with Dr. Browner's diluted, but I really like this kind of soap for my shower and I also tried this. Actually, Grant bought this for me. I asked for Dr. Bronner's and I guess they didn't have it, so they got this because Dr. Bronner's can be more expensive than other brands. And he's like, this is fine for you. And I was like, no, I don't know why I'm so brand loyal with Dr. Bronner's, but I am. This one is the Hemp Citrus and I'd never tried it before. I don't know why, I just thought that I wasn't gonna like it, but I ended up loving it. I would definitely get this scent again. I would not get this brand again, not because there's anything wrong with it, I am just weirdly brand loyal. Okay, next up, dry shampoo, a very important category of empties. These are two of the same thing, obviously, so clearly I love it. Clearly I've repurchased it many times. This is the Amika Perk Up Dry Shampoo. 
I absolutely love and swear by this dry shampoo. Wait a minute, there's more in here. No, no, no. This I will not stand for. <laughs> like calling myself out, I will have to use the last tidbit of this dry shampoo up. I don't know how it got into the empties pile, but I love this stuff so much. I use it almost every day. I swear by it. I recommend it all the time. The scent is incredible. I love the Amica scent so much that I even have like the room spray. I've even sprayed this room spray on myself like a perfume because I love the fragrance so, so much. It's so wonderful. And this dry shampoo works really well. I will say this dry shampoo is best for like day one, day two, Two. And then once you're getting into like day three, day four, like depending on what your hair is like, once it gets to like a real, real dirty phase, you're probably gonna need a more heavy duty dry shampoo to save your hair and really cut the greasiness. But I love to use this as like a, you know, early on hair dry shampoo. That keeps your hair fresh longer, but it's not really doing like heavy damage control. If you know what I mean, if you're the kind of person like me that likes to stretch your hair wash as long as humanly possible. I like to go five days if I can. A lot of times I only go three days or four days, but if I can go five, I would like to go five, but I do have to like break out the big guns and move to what, like Batiste? This is more of like a heavy duty, my hair is dirty, dirty, and I don't care if it feels dirtier from my dry shampoo, as long as it's like looking better. That's when I bust out the Batiste. I still love this stuff. It's a better price point than this, so if you just go for this, it's totally understandable, but this keeps my hair feeling fresh, light, fluffy, it doesn't weigh my hair down. I have fine hair. I'm rambling about this too much. I just love this so much, but they have different purposes. You know what I mean? Let's move on. Okay, here's another product that I have two of. So obviously I love it and would repurchase. I purchased something different, but let's tell you about this. This is the Good Molecules Cold Pressed Rosehip Seed Oil. It's an antioxidant rich facial oil that delivers natural vitamin A and helps restore skin elasticity. So been going through IVF trying to get pregnant forever so obviously I've been avoiding using my retin-a and my retinol type products because it's not good for pregnancy or even trying to get pregnant it's just risky risky you want to stay away from it but from what I've read and heard rosehip oil can give some of the same benefits it's a more natural vitamin a and obviously it's going to give you more mild results but I want to do whatever I can I struggle with milia I don't know where it comes from my mom actually struggles with it a little bit too but I like heavily struggle with milia. I have them like crazy. I don't usually get facials, but many months ago I actually got one. It was like a big thing. I don't know, to me, it was a big thing. The girl that was doing my facial was like, wow, audibly stunned by the amount of milia that I have. And I really do feel like this made a difference for me. And I heard about it because Miss Lululand, Laura on YouTube, was saying that she struggles with milia and she started using this in place of her regular moisturizer, like her nighttime stuff, and she really noticed a difference. So I hopped right on it. And the only thing that really kind of like, I don't know, I guess annoyed me about this product is that it's so tiny. <laughs> and I know if the formula is great, if it's working for you, obviously just work with it. It's just a tiny product. It is a very, low price point, it's very inexpensive. But since having this and obviously repurchasing it, I decided to buy the Ordinary Rosehip Oil and I'm not loving it as much. I don't know if I've changed something else. My skin has been freaking out because of doing IVF stuff. So I don't know if I can really judge it, but I feel like this might've been better than the ordinary for me. So I kind of regret not repurchasing this again. And I do think I will repurchase it again in the future. Okay, let's talk about more skincare. I have a ton of skincare in here, definitely a lot more than makeup. Excuse me, it's just, long, long hairs in this bag for some reason. Anyway, next up, another skincare product. This is the Autocorrect Brightening and Depuffing Eye Contour Cream from Sunday Riley. Sunday Riley actually sent me this. They sent me the sweetest little care package with a bunch of different skincare products that are all pregnancy safe or, you know, 
trying to get pregnant safe. And I was really excited to try all this stuff, of course. And this is the first product that I've actually gotten through. Eye cream, very easy to get through. I feel like it worked really well as far as keeping my skin looking nice with makeup over it. I don't feel like it worked any miracles as far as like curing my under eye circles or depuffing necessarily, but it moisturized well and it made my makeup look nice. Like it didn't increase creasing or look crepey or anything like that. However, I will say that I have even more milia under my eyes or under this eye specifically than I did before I used this. So that's a drawback for me. I don't know if it's the fault of the eye cream though. And I mean, obviously they sent this to me, but I gotta tell you the truth, I have more milia and nobody wants more milia, especially under their eyes because I feel like there's nothing you can do about that. It's just a super delicate area right there. And it's also right next to your eyeball. So even if you're brave, which obviously no one's supposed to do this, this is very against the law, very illegal. If you're gonna pick at your milia, which like, how can you not? You really don't wanna pick at the ones near your eye. It's like the danger zone, Bermuda Triangle, right? Like don't pick at anything in the eye area. But also it's right next to your eye. Anyway, I'm obviously, not happy about these new milia that have popped up. And I don't know if I can blame this eye cream, but I also don't know what else I can blame. So didn't exactly love this eye cream. I don't think I will be rushing out to get it again. I'm not, you know, bashing the brand as a whole, obviously, but this eye cream, not my favorite. Okay, let's take a quick break from the skincare marathon and talk about a little bit of makeup that I used up. First up, this blotting powder. I've been using this for so long, the Kick-Ass Soap and Glory blotting powder and also the One Heck of a Blot blotting powder by the same brand. And suddenly, I'm not seeing it anywhere. And I'm also not seeing like, a replacement powder. Like they just decided pressed powders, not for us anymore. We're not doing it. Even though this one was so good. I have several of these. I've talked about these in past videos. I, I talk about these all the time because they are just a staple in my life. I'm an oily girl. And when I go to touch up, I don't use blotting papers anymore. That used to be my thing, no more. Now I just use a little brush and just tap a little powder on and it saves the day. It saves my makeup, it keeps my makeup going longer. And suddenly it seems like it's not an option anymore. So I wanted to ask you guys, what is your favorite blotting powder if you're a blotting powder type of gal? I want to know, I'm oily, I need help. And this one right here, I've <laughs> continued to use it. It was sitting on my little makeup desk. Oh my gosh, all of this powder is about to jump ship. So obviously this one has issues. <laughs> I've continued to use it and don't even tell me, stop those fingers right now. I know that I can fix it with alcohol, but I fixed this one so many times. I've just decided, you know what? You are an at home powder. I'm just gonna use this almost like it's like a loose powder. <laughs> just, we're gonna pretend. I need to replace this. I need to find a blotting powder that is more accessible to me and I want to hear what you guys think. So tell me down below in the comments, what is your favorite blotting powder? Preferably not super expensive, that would be good. Anyway, moving on, we've got Tarte Shape Tape. I still use Shape Tape. I've definitely been mixing up with my concealers this year more than you know in years past. I've really been like a Shape Tape junkie for a very, very long time. I'm trying to break the habit. It's just good. It just is. It covers up the dark circles. It covers up the veins and, like nobody's business and I love it. Okay, moving on to something that I talked about being a favorite in a semi-recent favorites video. This is the Milk Kush Triple Brow Pin and it's a very cool brow pin because it has three little prongs sticking up. And the way that you use this is you lay them like this, horizontal is what I mean. <laughs> you have it horizontal towards your brow and you flick up and you flick to the side and you're mimicking that really fine brow hair shape. And it's also a really efficient way to do your brows because you're doing three brow flicks at once rather than just like one at a time. You know what I mean? I will say, I really, really, really love this product and fully intended to repurchase it when I was done with it or when it dried out, which it is now dried out or I would show you what that little three brow flick thing looks like. But I started using a different one, the Benefit Brow Pen with the little three prongs. And 
I'm so glad that I tried that one before repurchasing the Milk Brow Pen because that one is designed so much better. The little brow prongs, I'm gonna have to insert a picture or something, are much more stable. And as I use this one through however many weeks or maybe months that I was using this one, the little separated points got very flimsy and kind of smushed and not as sharp. So it was kind of defeating the purpose and I was still loving it. I loved it the whole time I used it, but the design of the Benefit Brow Pen is far superior, but it's got the same idea. I don't think I will be repurchasing this. I did really, really love it. I know I told you guys this was a favorite and it is a favorite. And hopefully if you guys took my recommendation, you love it too but I have to pass along that I do think the Benefit one is a better design. Anyway, another brow product. This is the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pen. This one's been around for a long time. It's just a very fine brow pencil with a little spoolie on the other side. I like this one, but I like those brow pens a lot better. I use the brow pen and then I go in with my all-time favorite brow gel. This is the CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow. I actually went and picked up a replacement for this one today because I just can't stop with this stuff. I like to have multiples around because it's just so good. I discovered this, I think last year, mid last year and have not stopped with it. It's obviously from the drugstore. I have really fluffy brows that are kind of hard to manage. And I just love how this one keeps my brows where I want them. I can actually flick them up a little bit and give them a little bit more volume, like in the way I want volume and not just the way they want volume, like sticking out from my face. And also it's really well pigmented. So I would absolutely recommend that absolutely repurchase. Okay, moving on, let's talk about a couple of hair products. These are all three major favorites, favorites that I cannot get away from, like to the point where I purchase something different and I regret it almost immediately. So this is the Amika hair mask. I've talked about this a million billion times. I even put it on my story the other day, like how much can I really talk about this before you're sick of it? I don't know, but if you're looking for a hair mask or even if you're just looking for a really nice conditioner, the Amika Soul Food Nourishing Mask is so incredible. Like I said, the Amika scent is just heavenly to me and I use this mask like it's a conditioner. I have long, damaged, bleached, fine hair. So with a hair mask, I don't want something that's gonna really weigh my hair down, but I need a lot of help. <laughs> I feel like my hair needs medicine. It needs all the help it can get. And this transforms my hair. I discovered it because they were using it in a salon for me a couple of years ago, and I've been using it ever since. I actually recently tried a different hair mask and I really liked it but I'm, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I missed this one every single time I use the other one. And I'm still getting through the other one. It's not bad, but I'm addicted to this. It's just so good. I can't, I can't say enough good things. Okay, and then again, I've talked about this a million times before. This is the Orbe Dry Texturizing Spray. It's expensive. I hate paying for it. I hate repurchasing it, but I don't stop repurchasing. Actually, I tried to like, wean myself off of it. I tried to like detox myself from this stuff so I would stop repurchasing it because I think it's like 40 something dollars and I try to use it so sparingly. So a can of this will last me for a long time and I just use it on the days where I shower and do my hair. And, and like, I really try to make this stuff last, but I tried to get off of it and I broke the other day and I ordered more from Amazon and it is coming. I couldn't do it. I tried other texturizing sprays. I have other ones that are much more reasonably priced and they just don't do the same thing. I will continue the search. It is absolutely worth it because I wanna be able to recommend something that is not ridiculously priced like this. Like, I feel guilty, I feel guilty. Anyway, let's not talk about it anymore. Next up, another hair product that I absolutely love and cannot stop using and will recommend this one forever and ever, amen. This is the, is it Daphne's? Davines? I don't know how to say the brand of this even though I've been using it for a very long time. It's the Oi All-in-One Milk. It is a 
detangler, which I really, really need because I have very fine hair and it is so hard to brush my hair out after a shower. It takes me forever. Even with most hair detanglers, it takes me forever. And this one really, really helps. Honestly, it's still a job. It's still annoying, but this definitely helps. And this one also is a heat protectant. So I like that that's kind of an all in one step and I don't have to use that much. It doesn't wear my hair down. I do keep it away from my roots cause that could weigh it down, but I just love this stuff. It's just so good. It's so worth it. Okay, next up we have another skincare product. This is the Neutrogena Makeup Remover Melting Balm. I really, really, really liked this makeup remover. It was really good. I had it in my drawer for a really, really long time and I don't know, for whatever reason I wasn't using it, but I got into it and loved it. I went to go and repurchase this and they didn't have it at the drugstore near me and for whatever reason I didn't order it. So I haven't repurchased it, but I would and I would recommend it because it worked really well for me. I just loved that this one took the makeup off. It had that oily feel. It was very effective, but it didn't stay on my face. Like I didn't have a hard time rinsing it off and washing it off with another cleanser. Like I wasn't struggling to not feel like I had the balm still on my face. You know what I mean? I just, I don't love that. Next up is my teeth whitener. I have been using this for, I don't know, 10 years at this point, somewhere close to 10 years. I still use it. I still love it. I don't use it as often as I used to. I used to have like crazy bright white teeth, but I still love this. I still use it. It's called Plus White Five Minute Speed Whitening Gel. And I still get questions about how I whiten my teeth and this is how I do it. It's very simple. It's very inexpensive and it's so worth it. Okay, we're getting there people, we're getting there. Uh, next up, this is one that you've seen a million times and I've been using it for years. It's the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. It's been around forever. It's very, very good. I love it. I still use it. I've repurchased it. This is the Isle of Paradise Dark Self Tanning Drops for Face and Body. I love this stuff. I've tried different brands in between bottles of this, but I have repurchased it because the different products that I've tried just haven't been as good. And I just love this stuff so much. I will mix it with a nighttime moisturizer or nighttime face oil, the rosehip oil, just like the tiniest drop on my face when I'm going to bed at night, like maybe the same day that I did my self tanner and I wake up and it's like, Makeup who? I don't need it. I have like a glowy, beautiful tan on my face. Like it's just the best feeling. I don't know why it just makes my day. I don't know why I don't do it every day because clearly I'm like a little overexcited by it. It's just the best thing. It's like a makeover. It's an amazing trick for like no makeup makeup or just like no makeup, no makeup. <laughs> I love it so much. It barely takes any to really make a difference on my face. I have also used it on my body. I like to use it on my body when I feel like my tan is kind of like leaving the building and I'm not ready to let it go. And I just mix it in with my body moisturizer. The body moisturizer that I've been using lately and I have repurchased this one. This is the Cetaphil Moisturizing Lotion for face and body, all skin types. It says it's a lightweight 24 hour hydration. I really like it. It's not super lightweight. I need moisturizer, like I need air, like I do a full body moisturize at least once every single day. And it's not that I have dry skin. It's just like, I don't know. I think I have a fear of dry skin. And so I always, always use moisturizer and I've really been enjoying this one lately. Obviously no fragrance. That's what I like. And it works really well if you mix in the tanning drops, but obviously that's not something that you have to do. And then this one, you've seen it a hundred times. It's a CeraVe PM Facial Moisturizing Lotion, ultra lightweight. I'm seeing neighbors outside, wonderful. Perks of moving your filming spot around. Anyway, this I use sometimes at night. I've definitely been using the rosehip oil more often than this moisturizer at night, but I always still use this one during the day. I know it says PM, but I also use an SPF. I use this SPF. I have repurchased this one since I used this one up. I love this one so much. I try to switch and then I always come back to this one. It's the Murad Oil and Pore Control Mattifier Broad Spectrum SPF 45. It's so good. I use it every single day. And even, you know, during the time of the day where I'm not wearing any makeup and I just have this on, it just is so nice because whether I'm wearing makeup or not, I get oily and this actually really, really helps. And it has like, it's not, I don't think they really like are marketing it this way, but it almost has a slight blurring effect. And I think that's just because it's mattifying. I just really love it. I'm oily, so I need help. 
Okay, next up for tanning, no one is surprised, I understand. We have two of the Saint Tropez Express Bronzing Mousse. I love this stuff. I try to get away, I try to use different stuff and I always come right back because this stuff works so well. You only have to leave it on for, I think, three hours. I usually do four hours, but it's just so easy. I never have mistakes, except for my elbows. My elbows always get horribly dark, which might bother some people a whole lot. Me, I don't care. I haven't been looking at my elbows my entire life. Why am I gonna start now? If it bothers somebody else that I have like weirdly pigmented elbows, like please get over it, please get alive. It doesn't bother me, but I think that goes for all self tanners. I don't think that's a Saint Tropez problem. Everything about it is totally perfect, flawless. It doesn't have a super disgusting fragrance. All I'm trying to say is this is my all time favorite. I keep coming back to it, obviously repurchasing. I've done a full self tanner routine video. If you wanna watch that, I'll link that. I also have the Bondi Sands self tan eraser, instant self tan removal. So I use this before I get in the shower Hour when I'm gonna exfoliate and redo my tan and everything and it works really well I've used different self tan removers and they don't work at all some of them actually make the job harder which is ridiculous to think about and this one just works so well it's not super expensive and I like it I will say the one thing I've been noticing with the last two bottles that I've repurchased is sometimes I squirt it out and it's just pure liquid it's supposed to come out as a foam like a mousse like this but it's just liquid, which makes it very hard to work with. I don't know why that's happening and I don't know how to like reactivate the mousse property or I don't know, make the pump work better. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Actually, this one sounds like it has a little bit more in it. And I think the reason why I just threw it in my empties pile is because I was so sick of dealing with the liquidy situation. It's just not good. It's not easy to work with. So there's that. Okay, so that is everything. I hope you enjoyed this little peek at my garbage. Definitely subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed. If you are subscribed, thank you so much. You are my people and I love you. I hope you guys come back next week for new vlogs, new videos. I am always uploading new videos and I'd love to have you back. You can also find me on social media. It's Leanne Says Everywhere. I love talking to you guys over there especially on Instagram. I'm always on my stories. Let me know what you guys want to see in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone. I don't know. I feel weird today. I hope the sun doesn't go down. It's going to go down, but I hope it doesn't go down while I'm trying to record this. It feels 0% like fall outside right now. I live in Dallas. I don't know what I'm really telling you this right now. I feel like we're not close enough. Are we close enough? <laughs>